about principles. I want to talk to you on principles of I am. And beginning reading at verse 11 of chapter 3 of Exodus, if you have it, you can stand for the reading of the word. If you want to, you don't have to. But if you would like to, you can. And it says, And Moses said unto God, Who am, who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. 13 says, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. Everybody say that. Say, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Father, I ask you for illumination and truth today. I ask God that the truth and power, that the knowledge of the truth, make us free in every arena of our life. And I'm asking, Lord, for the souls that sit upon these seats, that you would garner unto them a fresh new picture of who you are and who they are in you. I'm asking God that we walk out of this place in the power of I am today. And Lord, that we remember this on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, when, when the trials come, when the dark times come, we will remember we're created in your image. And that we can be who you say we are. And God, I ask for this truth to be revealed by your spirit through your servant today. In Jesus' matchless name. That all his saints say, they go, Amen. Amen. Maybe see it in the presence of the Lord. Put your Bibles on your lap just for a second. Clap your hands just one more time. For this reason that you know. Amen. Amen. I am that I am. I am that I am. Five small words. Five small words that have so much power. I am that I am. These five. Uh, small words represent grace, which is the five is the number of grace. Five first books of the Bible, five books of the law uh, are the Pentateuch. And five appears all over the scripture. You got five small stones that slayed Goliath. And you got five small letters that make up the name Jesus, the one in whose name we are saved. Have I got anybody in one of the names in the number five? And these five small words can make all the difference. And it's why he, he used these words to impart the knowledge as to who he was. And in fact, even the ministry is carried out with a five-fold ministry. The apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. The five small stones and the five letters in the word faith. It all encompasses around these words, I am that I am. And these words will empower to you in the darkest time of your life, as Jerry said today, the I am shows up. Amen. Amen. And I want to I want to give you five principles here today of the I am. Is this all right? Amen. The first principle of the I am is that God revealed who he was. When he was asked. Moses said to God. Now you all know the story. The children of Israel were in bondage for 400 years. And the cries came up before the Lord. And Moses who had been uh, born a Hebrew. Was raised in Pharaoh's house. Because he came to what? Out of the Moses and the bulrush. And so the daughter of Pharaoh saw Moses. And he brought Moses to, uh, she brought Moses to Pharaoh's house. He was raised in Pharaoh's house. And then one day he sees the Hebrew children striving with one another. And he tries to inject himself into the situation. And then another day he says, uh, well the first day he sees a Egyptian mistreating a Hebrew slave. And he kills the Egyptian. Y'all know the story. He takes and hides the body. I hope no one here has hidden the body. I hope no one here has a body with you. They just had Halloween. There were bodies all over the place. 
So he does this, and then the next day he goes out and he sees two Hebrews fighting among themselves, and he tries to inject them into the situation. How do I know anybody that's always injecting themselves into your situation? You have a little squabble, a little struggle with somebody. Well, you'll just be talking about it. They'll just put themselves right in your seat. Well, if I was you, what you need to do is back up and say, but you ain't me. Right? And so this is exactly what the Hebrew says. Who are you to talk to us? We know what you did and we know where the body is. And Moses said, hold up. This thing has been found out. He packed his bags and he got gone. And he went to the land of Midian where he became a sheep herder. And one day out on the back side of the mountain, herding the sheep, he sees this burning bush. This bush is burning and it's not being consumed. And so he goes to the burning bush because he wants to see this sight. And God speaks out of the burning bush and says, Take your shoes off, Moses, for you are on holy ground. Yeah. Yeah. Everywhere where God is, is holy. Yeah. You're on holy ground here today. Yeah. I haven't even got to the principle of I am just laying on the ground where you are here today. Yeah. This was a great sight that Moses wanted to look after. And when he got to it, God began to speak to him and said, I've heard the cries of the Hebrew children. He said, I picked somebody to go and set the children of Israel free and to bring them into the land which I promised them, a promised land. And Moses, this is where the story picks up. God tells Moses, I picked you. In fact, his name meant drawn out. He was drawn out of the bulrush. And God was drawn him out of the crowd and picked him to be the leader. Picked him to do something. Let me tell you something today. Every one of you have been drawn out of something. God has drawn you out of darkness. He, he's drawn you out of your past. He's drawn you out of bondage. He's drawn you, some of you out of drugs, out of jail, out of relationship difficulty, out of financial tranquility. Somebody in the room knows what I'm talking about when I'm talking about being drawn out. And so Moses, the drawn out one, says... You picked me. And this is where the story is. He says, who am I that I should go? And so then he gets down and he said, what am I going to say when the children of Israel say, the God of your fathers has sent me, and they shall say, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? God reveals who he is when he's asked. You have not because you ask not. Amen. Now I'm going to get down to what I am means. But God spoke those words, I am that I am, in response to the question, what is your name? And some of us don't have what we need from God because we never give Him the question. We don't ever ask Him, reveal yourself to me, show yourself to me. Moses said, show me your glory. Yeah. And we live life on a low level, pecking with the chicken. When we can be sworn with the eagles. Amen. When we ask God to reveal who He is to us. Amen. He reveals Himself to us in the way that we ask Him. You need a Father? God will reveal Himself. I am your Father. You need a Counselor? The Holy Spirit is the Counselor. But He reveals Himself when He's asked. And so if you need to know who God is today, all you have to do is ask. In fact, James says, if any man lacks wisdom, it's wise. The wise man knows that there's a God, right? Wisdom. The, the, the fear of the Lord is the, the beginning of wisdom. And so the fear and the knowledge of the Lord is what begins wisdom. And James said, if you lack wisdom, if you don't know what wisdom is, all you have to do is ask for it. The universe is replete with examples that God answers those who ask. That God will speak back to those that speak to him. God wants to communicate with his children. And his response as to who he is comes in response to a question from Moses and a question from us. It's not bad to question who God is. How many have ever heard the song, I want to know what love is? <laughs> How many believe God is love? Amen. How many want to know what it is? Amen. Maybe you need to ask, what is love? need to ask these questions. Talk to God. Give Him those things to work with so that He can talk back to you. I forget what movie it, it is. 
But there's a movie, maybe it's The Matrix, where the oracle or something keeps saying, you're asking the wrong question. <laughs> is that what it is? It's the oracle. You have to have the right questions. Even in your computer, you put in the right data and it will give you a response. Don't be afraid to talk to God and ask Him to reveal who He is to you. He will do it every time. This is the problem with a lot of church folks and a lot of churches and a lot of major religions. Somebody somewhere along the way had the question and had answered who He was. And they told a friend and a friend told a friend and a friend told a friend and you know how this works. By the time you get down to the 20th friend, they don't even know what the first one was talking about. You've got to know Him for yourself today. Mama's religion is not going to work for you. And some are mama called, daddy sent, and some just packed up and went. You've got to get a relationship for yourself today. And you will reveal the I am that I am to you when you ask. When you ask. That's number one. It's reveal. His, the principle of the I am is reveal when asked. Notice this, and I just want to say this about the response, I am that I am, is the exact opposite of what Moses said to God when he said, why did you pick me? He said, who am I? And God discounted the fact that Moses didn't know who he was to tell him, I am that I am. It doesn't matter if you don't think you're anybody. It doesn't matter if you think you're you're low on the totem pole, or you don't have the education, or you don't have the uh, ability, or you don't have the strength. All that it matters is you've been drawn out, and the I am is talking to you. Amen. It's not about who you are, it's about who he is, amen. and who you are in him. Say amen if you believe it. Amen. 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 It doesn't matter. You can say, who am I? And that's sometimes a good question to ask yourself. As long as you understand that the answer is not rooted in your, your past, it's not rooted in your genealogy, it is rooted in who, what God says you are and who He is. Amen. 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 All of us have a mama, all of us have a daddy, but we all have a father in heaven. Amen. And we can take after them or we can take after Him. Amen. 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 Number two, the second principle revealed here is that the... Statement, I am that I am, deals with the present. He didn't say I was that I was, or I will be what I will be. That's what some of us are. Well, that's, some, some, are some of us are in those two spectrums of time. Well, when I was in school, I was first in my class. Or when I was in high school, uh, nobody liked me. Or... When I was young, I, I was really good at this. Or when I was young, Daddy was mean to me. <laughs> Y'all hear me today? Or some of us are in this realm. Well, I'm going to be this in the future. I'm going to be better in the future. Look at your neighbor and say, the future is now. In fact, we've already had Back to the Future Day. Did y'all hear that one day this past couple weeks? Back to the Future Day. We're already in the future. You are the future. Amen. Amen. The Son says, Someday my Prince will come. Que sera, sera. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be all right in the end. I don't have to worry about it right now. But Jesus, or God, answered Moses in the present tense. I am that I am. In the present. What that means is, is whatever you need right now. See, I'm well right now. I may not I may not need a healing right now, but tomorrow I may have something that I need him to reveal himself as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord my healer. Y'all hear me today? In the present tense, he'll be to you what and who you need him to be. And that's why he said, I am that I am. Not I was, not that I was back there, not that I and, and the truth is is he was back there and he will be there. Forever, forever, yesterday, today, forever. He's the same. He's outside of time. But if you are inside of time, and all you have is right now. Amen. All you have is the present. Amen. And so some of us are waiting on God to do something way in the future. And God says, says I am that I am. Right now. Amen. God was calling Moses to go do something. But in the meantime, he said, I am that I am. And the bush stood burning, performing a miracle. Not being consumed. He gave Moses some, some tricks and things. He wanted him to know, right now, I'm the, I'm the God that's going to carry you back 
to the house of Pharaoh, the house that you ran from. I'm going to carry you right back into the house, right back into the face of the one that could accuse you of what you did. And I'm going to have you tell them, let my people go. And he told them, and he's going to say no. But I will take care of that. No wonder Moses said, who am I? Wow. God said, I'll be with you every step of the way. God said, I'm an ever-present help in time of trouble. How many believe this? How many believe that Jesus said, Lo, I am with you? That's why some people folks won't fly on airplanes. He said, Lo, I'm with you always. <laughs> Can't go high. No, God is with you when you're low, and He's with you when you're high. He's with you when you're when you're good, and He's with you when you're bad. Somebody said, Well, well, He got out of the car when I pointed my car toward the drug house. No, He went right into the drug house with you. He was the one that kept the drugs from taking your life. Y'all hear me today? He is the I am that I am in present tense. And who He is to us is the same God who, that He will be to anyone else. And that's why we need to share this message of the I Am. That he's always there. He always will be. But right now, He'll be what you need Him to be. Number three, and this is where I'll, I really want you all to get this. The first part, the, let me just say this as a principle if you want to write, write down. The first part stays the same while the last part can change. That's number three. The first part of I am that I am stays the same. And the second part can change. Uh, so how many of you all have more than one name? Gilberto Arias. What's your middle name? You don't have one. Okay, you're not a good example. Brooke? <laughs> Melanie Brooke Daly Arias. Now, you probably dropped off the daily, but... That's four names. And if you searched her out on the internet, all four of those names would be there. And then some of you all have an AKA or an alias. <laughs> As my son said a long time ago, a nickname. You know, my name is Andrew. People call me Andy. That's not, it. That's not on any birth certificate. And I'm not going to tell you what my middle name is because some of y'all will start calling me that and it's not a good name. <laughs> When I had my son and he became a junior, I became a senior. It got something added to it. But my name, the elements of my name have remained the same. Adding some things to it. And this is what God said. He said, you can tell them, I am that I am. He said, and God said to Moses, I am that I am. And you shall say to the children of Israel, I am hath sent you to me. So he said, I am that I am. And then he said, just two words. I am. Everybody say those two words. I am. I am. I am. I am. And the reason why the second part can change, and it's replete throughout Scripture, I am the vine, and you are the branches. I am Jehovah Jireh, the Lord your provider. I am Jehovah Rapha, the Lord your healer. I'm Jehovah Nisi. The Lord your banner. It's Jehovah that has got something else added to it. And what God is saying to us through this statement, that the first part stays the same, but the second part can change, is that He will be and He is whoever you need Him to be in the present tense of your hand this day. That's why when Jesus said, I am the truth, the light, and the way we picture, and we get concentrated on the truth, the light, and the way, and we need to get concentrated on the fact that He said, I am. I am. Everybody say that I am. I get excited about this because Jesus said it over and over again. I am. I am the bread of life. I am the door. We think about the door. We think about the bread. And we need to think about the fact that he was saying, I am. I am. And this is what God has revealed himself. It's his name. Is He will be to you exactly who and what you need Him to be in the present. He is all in all. Everything that you could ever imagine. It's all encompassed in God. How many believe that God is omnipresent? Amen. That means He's everywhere at the same time. That means there's not one place you could be that He's not. Amen. And even David said, if I make my bed in hell, you're there. In your low, lowest place, God is right there. 
No, so there are a couple things that we say about the nature of God. We say He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. The other thing that we say is we say that He's omniscient. And this character, this attribute of God means that He is all-knowing. Or He's all-knowledge. Or I'd like to say it like this. He is all-intelligent. He, scientists won't say that God is Jesus and that Jesus created the world and by Jesus all things. They won't ever say that. But you do have some scientists that will say there has to be a divine intelligence behind it. It's the omniscience of the I am. Do y'all hear me today? This is who God is saying he is. He is all things. He is the I am. And so he's omniscient. He's omnipresent. And uh, I'm glad about the fact that that God can be to me who I need Him to be, and He can be to you who you need Him to be. And it may be two different things on any given day. But He'll be there. So you have a financial need, the Lord can be your provider today. He says He is your provider. He is the I am of that. Amen? Amen. You need a healing today. He'll be the Lord your healer. You need Him to be your wisdom. You need Him to be your knowledge. You need Him to be your counselor. You need Him to be your friend. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Amen. It all Amen. has to do with that second part to change. But that first part is always going to be I am. In other words, he's saying, I'm not running out on you like so-and-so did. I'm not going to quit halfway through the job. He said, he that began a good work in you will complete it in the day of Christ. He is the author, the beginner, and the finisher of your faith. And he is on every day in between where you started and where you end up. He says, I am. I am. I am. That's good. Everybody said the first part stays the same, the stays but the, the second same. part can change. Fourth, the fourth thing, principle of I am, I told you in the whole past, is that this attribute, the pr this principle of I am, is forever the same. It will never change. It's immutable. It's always the same. He is always I am. He said, this is my name forever. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. The fact that he is, I am that I am. It won't ever change. You don't have to worry about, somehow, God running out of money. How many are a little bit trepidatious right now about our government? Or you're, you're a little uh, worried about Social Security being there by the time you get there. I mean, you need it. <laughs> Put a hand up. It's all right. I don't think Brother President Obama, Brother, Brother Obama's going to watch. I don't know. You get your taxes out of it if he does. So there are things we worry about, things that we don't know whether it's going to be. In fact, the, the truth is, is that tomorrow is not promised to us. And the people that are in our life, there's no guarantee that they'll be there forever. In fact, we know that we're on a destiny, we're on a journey, and that there are times, there's a time to be born and a time to die. And, and who we're with may not be who we're always with. And I'm not just talking about marriage, I'm talking about who, who you're sitting by today. Because seasons and life changes. But God wanted you to know, through all those changes and through all those differences, that He would forever remain the same. That His name would always be I Am. And we might call Him Jesus. And we might call Him King of Kings. And we might call Him Lord of Lords. But He said, I Am. That means that's not ever going to run out. He's not ever going to get short. He's not ever going to run out of power. You know, we think there's... People are worried that the sun is going to burn out and the earth is going to, uh, we're going to have uh, global warming to the fact that the dinosaurs, I don't know, all this stuff. Is, and, and, and I'm going to tell you, people will make you afraid. Don't be afraid of anything because I am is with you. Amen. Do not be afraid. Amen. The Lord your God is with you. The I am is with you. Amen. And that's always forever going to be the same. It's forever settled. There's no questions about it. There's not any problems with, with God's checks being good. There's not any shaky credit on God's part. Aren't you glad about it? Put a hand up and say yes. yes. Say oh yes. Oh, yes. Say oh, oh, oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> you did good. You did good. I only have one more. One more. This is really where I want us to go for this uh, month. And the thought that I want us to, to camp around. 
I said all of that about the I am, but these are principles of I am, and they also apply not just to God, who is I am. They apply to his people who are created in the image and the likeness of God. Amen. 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 Will you say that today? Say amen. Amen. Number five. I want you to know that this is a principle of I am. This is also our name and our nature. I mean, I'm, some of y'all didn't hear me right now. Uh, Andrew, his last name is the same as mine because he's my child. Hannah's last name is the same as mine because she's my child. Amen. 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 How many of you all are children of God? Amen. How many believe? How many have been baptized in His name? Amen. How many carry the name of the Lord on you? Amen. <laughs> now we're okay when it's when we're talking about Jesus, but do you know that Jesus' name is I Am? That's why He said it over and over again: I am the vine. Yeah. I am the bread of life. Jesus is the I am. Yeah. So we understand we carry the name of the Lord and His name is Jesus and we're Jesus' name people. When I believe in the name of Jesus, and we, sing it, we sing it all the time. We declare there's power in the name of Jesus. This is not to negate or take away anything from the name of Jesus. At the name Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You believe it? There is no other name given among men whereby men must be saved. Everybody call that name today. Jesus. Say it one more time. Jesus. Now I want you to say it one more time. Jesus. Now I'm going to blow your mind for a second. They don't pronounce it Jesus over other parts of the country. In fact, in Mexico, they say Jesus. <laughs> over in the Middle East, they'll say Yeshua Hamashiach. So that name Jesus doesn't always sound like Jesus. Y'all hear me today? We're getting our English translation and we're getting fixated on a word to get goosebumps. It says there's power in the name Jesus. And I believe it, I believe it, I believe it. And I don't want to take anything away from that. But we as Jesus say, folk, bring this name way up here. And God said, my name forever is I am. And we are created in the name and the nature of who God is. Who He is is who He made us in His likeness to be. Amen. You're not God. But you're like Him. Yeah. You're like you're supposed to be. <laughs> How many of you have ever heard the word godly? Yeah. Godliness. Yeah. How many believe in being godly? Yeah. How many take godly parents? Yeah. You know, sometimes you got to put a little awe on that. How many believe the, the folks that that cross the par prairie in their uh, in their uh, their uh, covered wagons were godly people. They didn't watch TV or chew tobacco. <laughs> godly people. Some of you all come from godly people, and you don't think of it because of what they did do or or what they did do, but you think about uh, about how they were, how kind they were, how loving they were, how peaceful they were, how they were always willing to share with you and how willing they were to give you a kind word when you were upset or bring peace to you. That's godliness. That's godlikeness. That is being like God. And you have a choice today and you have also a responsibility to be godly, to be like who He is because you have a divine nature and you have a fleshly nature. And in your flesh dwells no good thing. Ain't nothing good about you in your flesh. Amen. All folks are saying the flesh. Just in the flesh. Not doing right. Acting up. Sassy attitude. Bad attitude on Monday. Cuss the dog. Kick the cat. Tell your supervisor, no, I ain't doing it. That is not being God. That is not leaning to your divine nature. Do you hear me? Husbands and wives, can I talk to you for a second? Because you have a great opportunity to be godly in your home. But it's so easy to get into the flesh with the one that you love the most. Oh, I can't get no amen in this hole in this house today. <laughs> I won't tell on myself, just for a moment. I was trying to do something nice for my wife. Because she's got several things plugged in under her table by her uh, by her bed on her nightstand. And 
Her, her phone was plugged in and her light wasn't plugged in, but she had an extension cord down there. So I was fixing it. Now my wife has been blessed by the Lord with more shoes than the Mel Marcos. She's been blessed in the shoe department. Now I'm trying to get to the extension cord. And it's covered in all kinds of shoes. High heels, tennis shoes, flip-flops. So you got a lot of flip-flops. And so I'm just tossing. <laughs> I was throwing shoes out of my way so I could get this job done. And I was trying to do something nice. But in my heart and my attitude, I wasn't very, being very godly about it. Because I don't think God throws your shoes around. Do y'all hear me today? And that's how we get. We get self-righteous. We get mad at folks because they don't want to do right. We think we're being godly and we're not being godly at all. Because God put up with you in your mess. And you don't want to put up with somebody in their mess. Who gets quiet up here? But you're created in the image of God. In the name and the nature of the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, I come in His name today. And he said his name forever is I am. So what is this saying to me? The first part stays the same, but the second part can change. God created you in his image to give you the ability to say, I am godly. I am righteous. I am prosperous. I am love. Is God love? I love. Put your hand on yourself and say, I am love. I am. This is your name today. This is your namesake. This is your power. That you can say, I am who God created me to be. And you can cause your, your words to line up with what His word says. I am that I am. Amen. I am whatever I need to be. Amen. For my kids, I'm their provider. But for my kids, I'm also the disciplinarian. Whatever they need to be, I am that. Amen. I can't expect the schools to raise my kids. Do y'all hear me today? Amen. Amen. And you have to take this ownership and this onus of on yourself. Because as long as you're waiting on somebody to be something to you, you will never tap into the power and the nature and the knowledge of I am. Amen. You're all that you need. Thank God for the people that you have that come along. We are interdependent. But we're not codependent. Amen. If you ain't got nobody, you, ain't, you don't need nobody. Y'all hear me today? you got what you need. You are the I am. The second part of that can change. You can be who... Now, now, here's the power of this. God created you with such a responsibility and such a, a great thing that He's placed within you that this power of I am will work in the positive and it will work in the negative. I'm poor. I'm sorry. I'm just good. I'm mad. I'm angry. You see where the power of I am works? You could be all these I am's. You could be someone wonderful like God. God. Or you could be someone fleshly. Like the fleshly part that is you. And look, you won't come anywhere else in town that'll, that'll love you despite your weaknesses and your faults and affirm you in spite of them. More than right here. How many believe this? How many know that I say you got junk, bring your junk to church. This is not about condemning you or judging you. This is about empowering you with knowledge that you can be the person that God has called you to be. Amen. The knowledge that you created in His name and nature. You have His name. I am. I am. Amen. I want us to do something today. Breaking in front of y'all. Everybody say, I am. I that I am. I am that I am. I am peace. I am love. I am joy. I'm all these things. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now I want you to bow your heads and your hearts with me just for a moment.